Hey, what's up guys? John here. The Dutch government just collapsed less than 30 minutes ago. The Dutch government has reportedly collapsed. Deep divisions over migration policy reform have put an end to Prime Minister Mark Rutte's four-party coalition. And all over the immigration policies that are unfolding inside of the Netherlands. But so much is happening in just the last couple weeks. I mean, look at France. France, the protests and riots that spread there, went to Switzerland, they went to Berlin. You mean 45,000 45,000 officers on the ground, $1.5 billion in damage. I'm sure some would say they were mostly peaceful protests, but look at what's going on in France, in Netherlands. You look at record high inflation in locations such as Argentina and Turkey with over 100% inflation. Look at what's going on, right? You really start to connect the dots here, and what are you starting to see? You're seeing an uncertain world. I believe what we're gonna start to see over the next couple probably the next year, a couple of years, are gonna be uncertain chain of events that many would never be able to predict. And some of those are gonna be record high food costs, record high inflation, record high housing costs. Um, not mainly uh, rental costs. I, I believe rental costs are actually gonna go down because a lot of property owners are gonna be desperate to generate revenue during uncertain times. A lot of people are gonna start listing their homes for rent. But housing costs in terms of property insurance, property taxes, utility bills, all of these things are gonna to continue to likely climb. But look at what's happening. Look at what's going on in the Netherlands. The Dutch government has collapsed because of differences between the coalition parties over asylum policies. According to the media reports, the four parties were unable to find an agreement in the crisis talks chaired by Prime Minister Mark Root. Right? Well, look at this. This is what the dispute was about. So what was the dispute about? The leader of the center party, the largest four-party coalition, had wanted to tighten curbs on reuniting families of asylum seekers. Following a scandal last year about overcrowded asylum centers, he called for the number of relatives of war refugees allowed in the Netherlands to be capped to 200 per month and it had threatened to topple the government if the measure did not pass. Two junior partners, including the Christian Uni, a democratic Christian Democratic Party that draws its main support from the staunchly Protestant Bible Belt in the central Netherlands was staunchly opposed to the proposal. The four parties had held a crisis talk on Wednesday and Thursday, as well as a bid to save the shaky government, which only took office in January 2022. The asylum applications in the Netherlands jumped a third last year to more than 46,000. And the government had projected they could increase to more than 70,000 this year, which would be the previous highs of 2015. This is a breaking story that will soon be updated. So look at that. All the people that came into France, all the people that are relocating worldwide, we're going to continue. We're going to continue to see more uncertainty, and I believe more crime, and we're going to see more of these um, more civil un unrest, especially here in America. Now, many people thought we saw, you know, the height of it a couple of years ago. I don't think so. I personally believe that we're probably going to be stepping into more of those situations in the near future. Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't the case. But when you look at you look at what's going on here, like in the Netherlands. I mean, talking about when you're talking about food, when you're talking about housing costs, when you're talking about uh, you know, just feeding yourself. I mean, this is going to be a challenge. They want to close four, three thousand farms. And they're the second largest food producer in the world. The, in the world, the second largest food producer in the world. So many people would ask me, hey, John, what do you think is going to happen in the future? I just look at the fundamentals. I look at what's happening. If you're in America right now and you saw what happened in California, the floods, well, I mean, it was, they produced roughly half of the food supply, half of the fruits and vegetables in America. And they lost a lot of their food due to those floods. You look at the carbon pipelines, 2,000 miles throughout Nebraska and South Dakota, North Dakota. I mean, some of the most fertile farmland that is no longer going to be usable. And you look at that, you couple everything in with what's going on with uh, this clean energy transition. What are we going to start seeing here? Increased costs for farmers, increased costs for food, uh, reduced available food and increased costs because there's going to be just as much demand for a reduced amount of supply. Obviously, prices are going to continue to go up. But when you couple that you know, with what's going on in the Netherlands, you're going to have this uh, huge problem that I believe is about to unfold here worldwide. Now, over the last couple of years, many people thought, hey, this booming economy is just going to continue. But if you really just kind of pull back and you're looking around the world and you're saying, okay, Sri Lanka collapsed a couple months ago. Many people already forgot about that. 
you're starting to look at you know the France that whole situation you know people are it's almost old news and that was a couple days ago you're looking at Netherlands right now you're starting to look at you know some of these bank situations regional banks in America it's had multiple regional banks collapse you have all these random situations that have happened in such a short period of time but the problem is that we all get such crazy stories and such breaking news every six hours that it's hard to remember you know for most people what they did last weekend let alone what just happened yesterday and so what's what's going to happen next we're going to see more of this we're going to see more of this and people are going to be so jaded by all these big 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 stories that uh many people are just going to you know this is going to become normal this is going to be the new normal and so what are smart and savvy entrepreneurs and investors doing right now it's a big question well, they're looking at downside risk on everything, whether it be stocks, whether it be in real estate, whether it be anything. They're sitting on a lot of cash reserves. They're preparing for uncertain times. They're, push, they're putting themselves and positioning themselves accordingly based on these chain events. The reason they're doing this is because when you look at all these chain events that are unfolding, when you look at all these chain events unfolding, who is going to be who's going to be most to benefit? It's going to be large large institutional investors, large corporations that have a lot of cash, regular individuals that have cash, you know, mom and pop investors as well that have cash, but people that have money that are on the sidelines, they're going to be the ones that are going to be able to go out there and pick up deals and be able to do things, uh, be able to, you know, even grow food or even buy a farm or do any of those things. It's going to be those people. They're going to be the ones that are going to be able to go out and do things. And the reason for it is because what do people do in a, in a panic situation? They sell, they sell, they make emotional decisions because it's not all the time is it emotional based. Sometimes they're doing it because of financial constraints, which I believe is gonna be a very, very, very big challenge for a lot of people worldwide. The reason for that is we're likely gonna to continue to see utility bills continue to skyrocket, energy costs continue to skyrocket. So the costs are gonna to continue to rise the demand for social services are likely going to continue to spread and with that that demand of social services is going to likely continue to see increased taxes so you're going to have more inflation more in ta more taxes uh, more demand for government services it, it's going to equate to a situation in which a lot of the middle class i believe are going to uh, see some challenging times ahead but that's not i'm not trying to concern anyone i'm just simply pointing out the facts of what I see. I think a lot of smart and savvy investors and entrepreneurs are going to make smart decisions and they're going to position themselves in advance. I really do. But a lot won't, right? It's just the hard, the hard truth. What do you think about this situation with the Netherlands? Do you think this is going to be the end of it? I think it's just the beginning. I think it's just the beginning. I think from now until probably 2025, we're going to see dozens of more of these stories, dozens of more of these situations. And we're going to see more people looking to pick up second homes in America. They might sit on half a million bucks, 250,000 bucks. Like, you know what? For 250 grand, 500 grand, I can go buy a place in Mexico. I can go buy a place in Costa Rica. I can go buy a place in South America somewhere. I can go buy a place in a different country and I can take some risk off the table. And that's what I think a lot of people are going to start doing more and more and more. People are going to take risk off the table. They're going to start buying properties in different countries and different locations, getting second passports. Um, that's going to be the play, I believe, over the next couple of years for a lot of smart people. A lot of people also, I mean, there's ways in which people can get passports to different locations simply by, you know, where your parents were born or where you were initially born, having a, having a child in a different country. A lot of people are going to be exercising all these different strategies in the next five years. It's going to be the, the year of immigration. That's what I think. A lot of Americans are going to be immigrating. A lot of other people from other countries are going to be immigrating. It's just going to be the new, I guess, the new way of the world. But it's very fascinating as well because this is also going to have a large profound impact on the labor market. It's going to have a large impact on how businesses outsource talent. Everything, everything that we know is set to change. But with that change, I'm telling you, it's going to become a, a, a really, really important position for you to protect your family and to kind of isolate yourself. If you live in an, in an area in which, you know, could be high crime, you're going to want to, you know, put yourself in a situation to where, you know, you're able to, you know, be a little bit more isolated if you feel, you know, unsafe or if you feel uh, like problems are potentially coming. Like a lot of places such as San Francisco, LA, you, you hear all these stories, all this crime. Now you hear these stories now. Imagine what it would look like when things get much, much harder. People will do things that they otherwise would not do, not based on uh, them wanting to do it, but based on survival. A lot of people, I think, underestimate just how, uh, how aggressive people could be 
in a situation in which they have no other choice, right? That's what we're gonna start to see anyway. What we're gonna see here is this, more Netherlands situations, more, more problems likely coming. But with those problems, as I've mentioned, I think a lot of people are gonna make smart decisions. A lot of people are gonna position their families accordingly. They're gonna put themselves in the right business. They're gonna get out of high interest rate consumer debt and prepare themselves for the next couple of years so that they can invest and make smart, smart forward thinking choices. What do you think? Drop below, hit the like button, uh, add me on IG for content I won't post here. And uh, if you're interested in fixing credit, we would love to help you at greatcreditfast.com. I'll catch you in the next video.